That's me just putting a log in the fire. So we're on part two of the build. Uh, this is going to be fully stripped down. Not only am I changing the suspension, the front and rear, uh, I've got some really special parts for this, so I think it'll be really nice once it's finished. A few minutes later. So first things first, going to do the front brake, which wasn't really working. Needed a lot of attention. So this cover uh, not only holds the floating rear brake arm, but it also is a cover uh, for the gearbox and also you can get into the internal workings to access the cables and whatnot. On this bike, uh, it just runs two really big sealed roller bearings. Uh, and they fit basically direct into the frame. So. That's it. And then the key box is out there in your hand. This, as we described earlier on, was a bit of a it feels like it's a bit of a bodge job. And one of the things that was a bodge job on it was Originally, the bottom bracket uh, was fitted with two big bearings, two spacers, and a spacer in the middle, and then your cranks went right through the middle. The problem was, if it got a little loose, like the bearings were glued in, it, it, it started moving, and then it caused play, and then it essentially broke it. The, the piece of metal that I got made was then glued into the frame, and it's been good for a touch wood a long time. Some new decals for it, but there's also a couple of other projects that might be coming up soon. Um, some there. Donut. Oh, there's a Gave it a week and a quick hose out the back, rinsed all the rest of the crap off it. And as you can see, it's got quite a nice uh, carbon weave. So, as I said in the other video, the bike is a high pivot. It's got a linkage driven suspension on it, and it's got flex stays, which as you can see from me moving up and down, it's under tension. We were trying to build a super bike, and what does every super bike need? It needs titanium hardware. Oh, yeah. Because the forks that I'm fitting the Intend Infinity, I've got a flat crown, whereas the rock shops had a sort of curved uh, drop crown on the lower. Uh, the crown, the bearing had to sit on a spacer. So I got a spacer made up, machined up, with a small lip so that it sits on the, the inside race of the bearing. Uh, so it runs nice and smooth. I'm using my bearing press to press the bearing into the frame and make sure that the crown's on uh, its full travel. To accommodate the new shock, which is a metric shock, eh, I've had to get new plates made up with a slightly longer hole, but these ones are also adjustable. So they've got the standard hole, they've got a slightly longer hole, and they've got an even longer hole, which is which will accommodate the EXT shock that I've got and I'm fitting. So that's the new shock in, new mounting plates, it's all lined up, all new hardware, full titanium, looks good. I went for a set of short cranks, which are the kind of in thing now, uh, the 155 from Hope, which I don't think are long out. Um, the bottom bracket's particularly low, so I thought something a bit shorter would keep them out of harm's way. Hopes I've got a, a bolt in them that just tightens it on and tightens it off and the bolt's on the drive side. Just going to bolt up the brakes, got a big 220 rotor on the front and some Hope Tech 4s. 
some stopping power, so I don't think we'll have issues this time with brakes not working. Just fitting the new forks, the intents from Germany. Uh, I got them custom anodized in the UK, so they're a similar uh, colour to a Kayaba brown. I'm having a bit of a problem fitting the rear brake on, so I'm having to file them out to get it to fit right. Right, so that's me got in the car, get the bike built, so we're now going to take it up and test it, see how we go. problems with our animation but please bear with us while we sort things out and we'll get the program back to you very shortly again. To start this off I had a couple of technical issues, the first one being that I lost all sound at the end of the day. It was a breakdown and it was talking about the highs and the lows of the day, how the bike performed and just how the overall day went. It's a shame because the footage looked amazing but the lack of sound unless you can lip read just didn't work. I wasn't really sure how this was going to go post rebuild because obviously they take kind of 15 years down the line I wasn't sure if it would make a massive improvement on such an old bike. The Intend fork, although I had been used to upside down forks, with the Manitou Dorado and the Marzocchi Shiver, I was really really impressed at how it performed. I just wasn't expecting it to be as good as it ended up being. And another thing, the EXT that we put on the back, it's incredible too. And going for my Fox DHX5, which I thought was pretty decent, but I wasn't expecting the EXT, which is night and day compared to that even though I'd been told by my friend that it's one of the best shocks that he's ever ridden. It just seems to track a lot better, the suspension just seems to perform a lot better with the new adjustments to the bike. And another thing, I think that the, the fork and the shock, they both complement each other really, really well. Another massive improvement is the wheels. The mullet setup just works really, really well, and the 27.5 wheel on the front, it just rolls a lot better. The carbon rims, not only have they saved me a bit of weight, but they're also a lot stiffer. The wheels also are another huge improvement. One of the issues in the last video that I kind of pointed out was the tyres. The old Michelin kind of Comp 16s had had their day and they were kind of knackered at that point. But the old tyres can't really hold a candle to the new Michelins that they've got out now. I'm not sure if it's the age or it's just that the technology's improved a lot in the tyres. But the new Michelin DH 34 and 22 are brilliant. They're super grippy and they work really well in the kind of tacky, woody conditions we were testing in. And last thing I can't forget about was the Shimano Saints that were on before. They needed a lot of attention, but the new Hope Tech 4 V4s with the floating discs, 
Not only do they slow you down when you need to, but just to scrub that wee tiny bit of speed off, they're just brilliant. And now on to my other technical issue, which is actually a bit more of a major one. After sectioning the track and getting the bike set up and working the way we wanted it to work, we had a couple of screws vibrate loose on the gearbox mount, which we didn't actually notice till it was too late. And then in turn, stripping the mounts, but they also bent the plate, which ended the day early. The bike now performs even better than it was before, from the feedback I got and also from riding it myself. And last thing, it looks even better than it did before. It looks incredible now and I'm really really happy how it's turned out. We obviously put in a lot of work to the previous video, but it would have been really nice to go head to head and see how it really compared when it came down to the clock. My plans in this series was it was only ever going to be a part 1 and a part 2, the old build and the new build, but because of the technical issues I'm going to make a part 3 where I'm fixing it, I'm going to repair all the stuff that's broke on it, I'm going to recondition the gearbox because it, it was kind of giving me a couple of technical faults also, and just improving a kind of wee couple of things and putting some finishing touches on it that I had that I never had on the day when we were building it. And lastly in part 3, I'm going to do a breakdown of what it cost me to do it, what I've done and what parts I used to build the bike. I hope you enjoyed part 1 and part 2. Please drop me a like below and subscribe for part 3 which is coming soon. And I've also got some other exciting projects coming up soon that I'm working on at present. So I'll see you in the next part. Thanks for watching. Bye.